What's going on everyone? My name is Nicholas Merton and today I am extremely excited because this is not just any ordinary video. This is the last final part, part 15 of my series on SQL and data analytics for beginners. Guys, I gotta say right off the bat before we jump into what we're gonna be doing today, I am extremely proud of you all. If you've made it this far into the tutorial, you have obviously tested your skills in SQL syntax, managing a database, creating tables, querying for that specific information, and you've also been able to transition to the side of Tableau and doing visual data analytics and building insights from the information as well as using the tools and getting kind of the fundamentals at a beginner level of how to do data analytics within modern software. So guys, really, you should be proud of yourselves at this point, but we've got one final last challenge. And in this case, we're going to actually try to take uh, one of the data sources, which is the uh, World Indicators data source, and we're gonna actually apply it to a scenario where we can actual, actually provide valuable insights and build value. So let's say, in this case scenario, we are working for a retirement home company, and we're trying to find the best location or region specifically uh, where we can start doing our business, where we can really make the most money, uh, have solid uh, profitable growth over time, and really have a nice sizable market towards our target audience. So let's not wait any for longer, guys. Let's jump right into it and connect to our data source. So as I stated, we're gonna be using not a uh, you know not an imported data source. We're just gonna use the world indicators. And now let's start thinking about some some insights we can gain. Well, I know one that would be really good is to always focus on where our target audience would be. So where is the majority of our target audience? Well, our, we have to really decide first what our target audience is gonna be. And you know, I think that you know somewhere around sixty five would be good. And ironically enough. If we look inside the measures here, we get a lot of information from this data set. And look at that, we have a population of 65 or over. So it measures how much of the population is that much in percentage. So let's go ahead and select the country dimension. So it obviously knows that we wanna see this in a map form. And we're gonna use a filled map. Now, of course, as for now, it's blank because we haven't added our dimension. And in this case, we'll use the, or sorry, we haven't added our measure. And in this case, we wanna add the population 65 or over. So instantly right there, we can see a change in color and we can see that uh, if we remove the show me uh, for the different chart types, uh, we can see that the index over here shows that as the color gets darker, we can see more of a population that has older people, mostly senior citizens. And wow, you know, if we use the chart tool here, we can zoom in and we can also move our chart. Yeah, my other tool there, yeah. And I can obviously see, I think we can all we can all obviously see that Europe is a huge market right off the bat. I mean, it was the standout from the beginning, even when we were zoomed out like that. So we can obviously see there's some big standout countries like Germany, Italy, Greece, Bulgaria that have a huge amount of retiring population. And this goes hand in hand with what's happening with kind of the earlier stage developed countries. Meaning that with developing countries car comes lower population growth and more individuals going into retirement. So now we know what's a good target audience or at least where our target audience is geographically. So we've gotten this idea that Europe is generally a good place to focus and we've got a good little list of countries that we can focus on that are displayed right here on our first chart. However, let's provide some more insights and start thinking about some ways that we can really start to hone in on this. Actually, before we do that, let's find a name for the sheet. And what's really cool is in the previous videos I'd shown you guys uh, to change the sheet name up here, you can change it down here and it'll automatically change it on the uh, screen. I just did it that way when we were doing it earlier, but basically let's think of a good name for this. So what are we measuring? Well, in this case, we're measuring the um, population of 65 plus uh, per country. So we're gonna do uh, population over 65 plus by country, okay? And then we'll go on to our second sheet where we can start providing some extra insights. So let's think of another one. Well, I wanna make sure that the company uh, is in a good region or country more specifically that uh, has good 
growth overall. We at least want to get the region down, so let's keep it simple and focus on the region. And let's think about how we can display whether or not Europe's GDP is good. Well, it's pretty simple. What's nice is if we scroll up, there's a GDP measure. So let's go ahead and we'll measure it over time as well. We want to see growth in GDP. So we'll go ahead and set our first dimension as year. And we're going to go ahead and put uh, GDP in there as well. Now, it's going to put the whole uh, GDP, I think, of, I don't know if it's actually going to selectively put Europe yet. However, let's go ahead and put our region. Now, at first here, we got a huge cluster of data. We don't want all this information. We're just simply trying to see if Europe, uh, through visual representation, shows a growth in its overall gross domestic product. So let's go ahead, go to our region uh, up here, and go to filter. And now, as you can see, it has the Americas, Oceania, Middle East, Europe, Asia, and Africa selected. We don't want anything else other than Europe. So we're just going to deselect all of these. We'll go ahead and click apply and OK. Now, it's nice that we have our information printed, and it's specifically what we want, but it's not visual, visualized in any way. So let's go ahead and do an area chart. And there we go. Right off the bat, we can see that there is a nice steady growth. However, let's go ahead and add a little bit of a, a trend line. Let's go ahead and click yes to that. Close this. And we can see that we've got some growth in here. This is really great, guys. Uh, let's go change the color, though, because you know we don't want to talk about GDP. We're talking about money. We're talking about economy. So... Let's do uh, the summer one, which its first color is a nice lime green with a, a darker green line for the trend line. And there we go. Now let's give this a name. And it should be economic GDP. Uh, we'll do economic GDP of Europe over time. Okay. So we've got two great charts so far, but there's one thing that we really haven't focused on to really make Europe stand out against the global stage. If we really want to kind of hone in that idea that Europe is our best candidate, let's measure something that is so uh, fundamental in what we're looking at and also is just conveniently put into this data source. And that is, let's go ahead and actually create our first sheet before I do that. Uh, our, our third thing I want to focus on is the health expenditure per capita. Look, at the end of the day, guys, we're operating like a business here. We need to think about whether or not we're stepping into a market where someone spends $500 on healthcare or 2,000 to 2,500 on healthcare. So let's think about what countries and what ways we can measure that. Well, it's pretty simple, honestly. We can measure by region and we could also put our measure of health expenditure per capita. So let's go ahead and put region. And then we'll go ahead and put a measure of health expenditure per capita. And we've got a nice little laid out table like that. And we can obviously see, yet again, Europe stands out as our most predominant candidate to really reap in some decent profits for our company, or at least generate a nice stream of cash flow and revenue. However, this doesn't really look nice it's just a, a little table. Why don't we make this table a little more colorful? Well, there is a really cool chart that is a highlighted table. And a highlighted table will like help make our numbers stand out a little bit more and our values stand out more in the sense of uh, what is the maximum, what's the minimum. And we can go ahead and put this in descending and obviously see that under Europe, we have the Oceania, Oceania, the Americas, Middle East, Asia, and Africa. However, Europe is the standout candidate. It is three, almost, I would almost say three times as large as its bottom competitor in the sense of regions. So this is a great chart, guys. It instantly shows that Europe is a great candidate. So we'll go ahead and do a name for this. And this will be, uh, we'll do, a, in this case, it'd be health expenditure. Did I spell that right? We'll just do health expenditure abbreviated. Health expenditure by region. Oops. I'm just, my spelling game is not on point today. Health expenditure by region. There we go. So now that we have all three of our charts, we've got a lot of good visual insights. We can obviously see that Europe is going to be the standout candidate. So let's find a way we can visualize this to everyone. Let's go ahead and create a dashboard. So this dashboard uh, will be called Europe. Uh, data and we'll go ahead and start placing in our charts.
So we'll go drag that in first, our population by country. And let's actually set our dimensions here. I'm gonna go ahead and set it to what I know I should set it to. Uh, I'm gonna set it to 1200 by 1600. Okay. And we'll go ahead and we're gonna, sh we're gonna add in our extra information. Oh crap, nope, didn't wanna do that, my bad. <laughs> All right, let's get that closed. And then uh, what I'm gonna do is, I'm actually just gonna bring this above the chart. There we go. And then we've got our first chart here. However, we're gonna add our other ones as well. So let's scroll down. Let's add economic GDP of Europe. Put that at the bottom. And we'll go ahead and put this on the side here. All righty. So it's a little bit clunky right now. So let's go ahead and move this down. Move this. We have to, you just kind of got to work with what you got um, and make everything look to how you like it. So I'm just going to stretch that a little bit more. Health expenditures by region. And we'll, we'll bring this down as well. We don't need this to be as tall. Shrink this a little bit and just really hone in on Europe. We're not trying to show a huge map here. So let's get Europe a little more specified there. And well, you know what, let's stretch out this a little bit because we've got so much room. So let's go ahead and do that and we'll stretch it out to the side as well. I'm gonna make this stand out. There we go, cool. So we've got a nice little layout of information here. We've got the health expenditure by region, we've got population over 65 by country, and we've got economic GDP of Europe over time. So all very simple, however, very insightful. And we've been able to take these big clunks of data and make it visualize so we can get these insights. They're very valuable. So let's go actually, no, let's do a little bit of cleaning up though, because this isn't perfect. Uh, our health expenditure per capita, well, we've already got that there. So we don't really need this. We can go ahead and delete that. And our region for Europe, we don't really need that. We already specified that this is uh, economic GDP of Europe over time. So let's go ahead and get rid of that. We'll go up here and just hit the X. And there we go. Uh, that looks a lot better. So uh, now that we've got that, we've got a dashboard ready. So now let's bring it to a story where we can start doing some kind of uh, some verbal analysis over what we found. So we'll go ahead and drag our dashboard into here. We've got all that information. Let's reset the resolution to 1200 on the width and the height I'm gonna give it a little extra I'm gonna make this 1800 so uh, oh maybe we might want to make the width a little bit more let's see 1400 and we'll cut that down to 1300 there we go that looks good alrighty so now let's give this a title this is going to be let's give it some kind of cool uh, kind of almost like article like name something that really kind of hones in what we're talking about here we're gonna say Europe the frontier for retirement health care. All right, cool. So we got a nice little title up here. Let's go ahead and center that. Apply, click OK. And it's starting to look really nice. So let's go ahead and add a capture. We're going to drag this out so it's a little wider. And we can give a nice little brief description of what we got from this data. From our analysis, we've spotted a clear trend towards solid economic growth and potential uh, and European markets for our company. And we'll go ahead and stress that a little bit more. So overall, we've got Europe, Europe, the frontier of retirement healthcare. From our analysis, we spotted a clear trend towards solid economic growth and potential in European markets for our company. And we obviously have all the data and information, very visual, very colorful, and very enticing right in front of us to really kind of hone in our statement up there to really back it up. So guys, we've made the story. We've got it ready to go. Now it's time to share it with the world. Well, what's really cool about Tableau is you don't need to have a thousand different people with Tableau software. That would be a little redundant and quite expensive. 
So we as data analysts have a really cool tool within Tableau. We can share our work with the world. That's right, guys. We can share this with the World Wide Web. So how are we going to do that? Well, I'm going to show you guys. If we go here to server, oh, my, mouse, my uh, little trackpad freaked out there for a sec. If we go to server and go to Tableau Public, we can go to Save to Tablet Public As. Now, when you do this, it's going to ask you to create a profile. However, I've already created one, and this is not the same as your Tableau uh, profile that you created with either your free trial or account. You're going to have to create a separate profile for this, and uh, you'll see that it won't work. So. It's free though, it's something that you can set up for uh, and it's just a way to share your stuff with a public network. Almost like a little kind of enclosed social media of Tableau. But we'll also be able to share it with uh, its own URL and also uh, with uh, an embedded code on our websites. So we're just gonna go ahead and click Save to Tableau Public As and it's gonna ask us for a name. So we're just gonna do the same as our store name, Europe, the frontier of retirement health. All right, go ahead and click save, and it'll start publishing your views, and you just have to give it a few minutes because it is making this built for the web. And just like how we, inter it's not just gonna be a static image too. That's the thing I think a lot of people would stereotype this would be. It's actually an interactable chart. It's literally just like how it is in Tableau, and we'll see that right now. So as it loads up in my browser, we'll give it a little bit of uh, time to go through the briefing process. And there we go, guys. There's our analysis of Europe and how it's our potential candidate for our company. So our employees can see this. They can interact with it. Everything is very visual. It pops out. It's interactable. Uh, you can zoom in on it. You can zoom out, do whatever. And as you can see, too, it started out uh, zoomed out or to the exact measure that we had on Europe. Uh, my trackpad's just bugging out right now. <laughs> so anyways... We've got our, yeah, there we go, now I got it back. So we've got our nice charts and everything. We can scroll down, we can interact with our economic GDP chart. Everything is functional, guys. So we've got everything online and ready to go. Now, before I wrap this up, I wanna let you all know you can download it, uh, you can view it in full screen, and you can also share it. And this is where you can get the embedded code uh, and the link as well. And you can select between the current view of what you have and the original view. So guys, I gotta say it. Congratulations, you are now officially, as individuals, in my mind, beginners at SQL and data analytics. Congratulations, guys. And I gotta say, it has been an honor and privilege that you guys have stuck around and gone through this entire tutorial. I can definitely tell you, you've probably watched the view count, and I'm gonna make the calling now that it's gotten shorter and shorter because a lot of people can't stick with it, guys. They usually don't have the passion or drill behind it to really learn about it. And there's some of you out there who have made it this far who really have probably sparked a passion within it. I sure know I have. I love data analytics and I love also as well SQL and database management because I understand and I hope you do as well to this tutorial why they go hand in hand. They can really come together to provide a lot of valuable insights and help you make proper decisions in the, in the process of doing whatever you're doing for yourself, for an organization or company. So guys, like I said, congratulations. And it, like I said, it's been an honor for me to teach you all. So thank you for sticking with it, guys. And if you'd like to see another tutorial or if you've got any questions or errors along the way, like I said, do not feel you know, obligated that you can't leave a comment. Please contact me. I'd love to help you guys. Anyways, that's it for the video. I appreciate y'all sticking around and I'll see you all in the next video. Stay tuned for more.